Hey guys, welcome to the channel, Scuba Travel and Adventure and Thomas here. Today I'm just heading out to show you what kind of gear I'm using uh, while I travel. Look at this uh, outside. One week ago uh, it was still green and today everything is starting to turn yellow. Fall is here. That's all happened within a week. And I'll share with you guys what works for me for the past couple of years. I have replaced uh, multiple items, uh, so I tried one thing, then another thing, and now I think I got everything that I would uh, expect. And uh, so far, on every trip, it's working for me. Uh, the gear is just performing the way it should. I see there's uh, always a lot of questions on a motorcycle camping group uh, on Facebook. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, new riders and some guys do things differently than others. Um, I, I've been uh, riding a motorcycle now and camping for about, I would say about 10 years or more. and. Uh, yeah, over time I was able to find out uh, what what is good to invest your money on uh, because definitely it's not always a good thing to to buy the cheap thing uh, because the cheap stuff usually doesn't last long or it's not performing as uh, you would expect. Like sometimes you get lucky, some stuff for example on AliExpress will work okay but another stuff is not going to. Fall time is so beautiful, just too bad it doesn't last long. It's also perfect riding season. Alright guys, so I will start first uh, what goes where, how do I organize my luggage uh, when I travel. Um, I use the hard panniers when I go on a longer trips, uh, definitely they're more convenient. When I'm driving locally, I'm using the Bumot Extremada uh, soft panniers. So that's, uh, and I always usually take my gear with me. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a day long trip or a um, couple days. So today I decided to take my hard panniers uh, for the reason to show you how I normally travel. Like you probably, if you follow my videos, uh, for example, from Utah, uh, I was uh, having those panniers on even when I went off road in uh, Canyonlands and other areas around there. So. The reason why I'm taking those because uh, they're much easier to pack everything and much easier to organize everything. Just off the bat, uh, the top pannier, it's always loaded with my camera gear and all the little stuff uh, that I use. Left side pannier has my camping gear and the right hand side pannier has all my food and cooking gear. Uh, one thing I didn't bring today with me is my duffel bag. I have a waterproof uh, duffel bag that I usually carry all my, all my clothing in it. Uh, so that goes usually just, just straps on behind on a rear seat. I have also attached uh, two jerry cans. 
One of them is with fuel. So I have three liters of fuel when I'm uh, traveling uh, on a longer stretches. And the other side has a fresh water. So for cooking and drinking, I also wear a camel pack um, with additional three liters of water, especially to the places where it gets really hot. So I'll show you all the content uh, and gear that I use when I'm camping on a motorcycle. Um, right on top, easy to access, is my towel. It's packing really small and uh, it just rolls up and it's easy to clean and it absorbs the water. So I've got this one from the camping store. I believe this one here is from Atmosphere here in Canada. And uh, that is made by M McKinley. Uh, so it's a good quality camping towel. I also carry biodegradable soap and most of my washing stuff is biodegradable just so it's safe for the environment. Uh, because quite often we will wash ourselves in a river or a lake and this way I'm not polluting the water. So that stays on top, easy to access just in, just in case if you need to rinse off. So right on top of all the gear, I have my tent, which is made by MSR, Haba Haba NX, and that's a per two-person tent. Uh, it's more than enough room uh, when I'm camping, and it packs really small. As you see, it's uh, quite small and it weighs next to nothing. So this is a really good quality tent, and uh, they call it a three-season tent but I'm pretty sure uh, if I would want to push it, I can actually uh, make it a four season tent. Uh, I don't think uh, I would have a problem because it all comes down to uh, the sleeping bag and uh, insulation that you have off the floor, which uh, I will talk about uh, in a second. So the sleeping bag that I'm using is a Klimit Static 5 or V, however you want to call it. Uh, very comfortable. I've been using this for the past two years. I had a different one before made by Thermarest, but uh, it was a little bit bigger. Packs really small, as you see. So that's sitting on top of my palm and um, it provides uh, enough insulation. And the weight of this thing is only 530 grams or 18.7 ounces so super small the r value of this is uh, 1.3 so that's uh, sufficient for for everything and all the climates that i was sleeping so far usually the coldest uh, area to sleep is here in canada especially when we go early in the season out in british columbia in the mountains or in alberta in the mountains but uh, it performs really well mosquito repellent gotta have that uh, especially early in the season not so much right now it's fall as you see so the bugs are pretty much gone and uh, but i always keep it handy with me next thing right on top easy to access is my camping chair this is a cheap one from amazon so you like you've seen the videos i've, I've been using this in the past and it's very uh, similar to that Helix uh, chair, except it's a fraction of the cost. I believe it's like 20, 10, 29 or $30 of Amazon. So that's the next item that has to stay on top for easy access. Next thing is my pillow, which is an inflatable pillow. Uh, you can get it pretty much in any camping store and the storage pouch is attached to the actual pillow and it packs everything inside so it's an inflatable so just a couple breaths of air never ever inflate those fully because you will not sleep comfortably just a little bit of air so you'll feel it where at which point is comfortable uh, don't blow it up all the way because uh, otherwise your head is going to be bouncing and sliding on this and those pillows they work great i've been using this for i don't know eight years now and it works great so next couple things is uh, my sleeping liner uh, that goes into the sleeping bag. I, I have two different sleeping bags. One of them I brought it here the, that I don't carry at this time of the year. Uh, this is my Chinook sleeping bag. So the one that I usually pack when I travel 
uh, to the warmer places and is usually good uh, only to plus 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit but again it's uh, very small packs small and it's a really comfortable sleeping bag if you want to get more R value out of it that's where the sleeping liner comes in place I have two different sleeping liners so I can I was sleeping with this sleeping bag uh, in the temperatures at minus five and I was still comfortable. This is a Chinook uh, sleeping bag, uh, thermoplam, hooded, and it's a square bag, it's not a mummy bag. A uh, great little bag, weighs uh, 1.9 uh, pound or uh, 0.084 kilograms. Very small, if you'll see on, a, on top of my uh, hand, uh, it's a tiny sleeping bag. Uh, so that brings the R value when I'm uh, using the sleeping bag. Uh, plus you want to use a, a sleeping bag liner so you don't uh, make your sleeping bag dirty. Much easier to wash the liner than the whole sleeping bag. And it's probably better just to wash the liners uh, than washing too often your sleeping bag. Sorry, this is the thinner liner that has uh, uh, just pretty much like a microfiber so it gives you insulation and just the extra pr uh, protection inside the sleeping bag then I have my bigger liner which is a C2 Summit that one here has way more R value so that will increase your sleeping uh, by almost uh, 10 degrees what they said what they're saying but um, uh, I've been using this only when it's really cold. Uh, it performs gr uh, great. And, and this one is made out of fleece. And that's a reactor series. And I use a regular. I'm about six feet tall. That's uh, more than enough in length. And they will, they both pretty much the same. The other liner um, that was made by MEC, which is Mountain Equipment Co-op here in Canada. Never leave anywhere without the toilet paper. So I carry toilet paper, uh, easy to access as well. Uh, you don't have to dig it deep into the box. So the next is a hot core sleeping bag. This sleeping bag I have purchased in Cabela's. Uh, that's a hunting and camping store. And that sleeping bag, it's a little bit bigger. So that sits on the bottom of my panniers, but it's rated to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So you can still, you can sleep comfortably in a cold temperatures uh, using this sleeping bag. And uh, it's not that heavy, that here it's only four pounds or 1.8 kilogram. So the model number is right here. If you're interested, it's a T300CH and it's a lightweight uh, tapered sleeping bag and it, it comes with the compression sack. Uh, very nice, uh, very comfortable. So there, um, the maximum limit, as I mentioned, is minus 20. If you add the liners, then you'd be comfortable. But the comfort level on the sleeping bag is actually only minus 12 degrees Celsius or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So those are the specifications. And it's also insulated uh, and hooded. The last thing that's sitting in my pannier is my motorcycle cover. So I like to cover my motorcycle for a night. Uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, raining or not. I usually put the cover when I go to sleep. So the bike is uh, covered from elements and even the dripping sap from the trees. I don't want that crap on my bike. So I carry that with me all the time. So now we'll have a look uh, what's on the right hand side pannier. So here I have my Trekology folding table, table right on top. I don't use it that often, but sometimes, so, uh, for example, I used it when I was in Utah out in the sand and desert. Uh, that's a foldable ta table. It's from Amazon about $25, $30 and it packs really tiny. Uh, comes with this uh, packing sack as well. So right on top, easy to access, is my little kitchen stuff. 
I have reviewed uh, some of the stuff uh, in uh, other videos, like for example, this uh, stove that I'm using. That's a MSR International uh, stove. Uh, it's a multi-fuel stove, so you can use um, either the propane or butane, and uh, you can also use the regular gasoline. Most of the time I'm sticking to the butane. It's much easier and less messy, but if I run out of butane, I always have the, uh, I always have the option to use the gasoline. And uh, yeah, I can link the items uh, down below the video uh, to the review of this uh, stove. Next thing, I have my little towel, uh, just wiping the dishes after be they're being used. Biodegradable um, wild wash, so you, you can uh, wash yourself with that stuff, or you, uh, you can use it for uh, doing dishes. So it's uh, multi-purpose, it's a body wash, shampoo, and a dishwasher detergent. Uh, also, you can wash your clothes with it. and. Uh, even though it's a, such a small bottle, but you just need a little bit uh, of that stuff. So you don't use too much and uh, it does a great job and it's good for environment. Here I have the valve for the stove. Uh, if I want to use the actual cigarette lighter to light up the stove that I have two of them. One is usually here and one is in my tank bag. And we have the C2 Summit cookware. Uh, inside the cookware I have uh, usually a couple ketchups, uh, sugar, which I don't use too often, pepper, salt and stuff like that. So th this is actually three pieces here. So right on top it is a kettle. I made a video when I was uh, showing you my uh, Nanopresso uh, coffee maker. So it comes with the lid and it's collapsible which uh, packs really small as you see. The next thing inside uh, this setup here, I have a little bowl and it can be used for uh, soup or your cereal in the morning if you don't want to use the mag. Uh, so there's two options. The main cooking pot also collapsible with the lid. So you can cook pretty much anything in this thing. But I also have the frying pan which I will show you in a moment. And that's all made by C2 Summit. Uh, my spices, so I got a few spices that I carry with me. Uh, sometimes when I buy the meat uh, for uh, campfire, I will use them. And the main thing is the salt, garlic, uh, barbecue spice, pepper. Uh, <laughs> there's two other ones that, uh, this one is a season, seasoning salt and this one is a steak spice but the labels came off of it. And the last thing in here is the can opener, which I also have on my multi-tool. I'll show you that in a second. All this cookware packs really small. Basically, it's also hold, uh, it's being holded with the little elastic on top. So it fits in, uh, in, a, in my palm uh, and it goes uh, to this little container. Uh, it's a basically, it's a lunch box that I picked it up in a dollar store uh, so it's uh, not expensive but it keeps nicely everything organized and that all folds nicely into this little kids lunchbox i have a couple more rags and that also pre prevent my coffee mug from being beat up inside bear spray uh, i don't know how it ended up in this pannier it should be on the other side but whatever it's here uh, never go anywhere if you're staying in the wild, uh, especially off-grid, where there's not many people. Have your bear spray with you, so you feel safe that way. A little bit of coffee. I like my coffee, so I always carry coffee. A rechargeable headlamp. Very nice and bright. It's actually super bright. And it is rechargeable with the USB, uh, micro USB. Uh, so it's... a uh, it's an item that you gotta have especially when you're coming into the campsite in the evening or at night you want to do anything so you have the light uh, the light with you i have a, another one like this uh, in my tank bag as well so there's two just in case one of them uh, loses the charge for some reason i have the other one right in this uh, little bag i have a uh, cappuccino a couple oatmeal and tea uh, green tea 
Wakako Nano Presso. So I made a view, uh, review of this uh, uh, coffee uh, extractor. Uh, it it makes excellent coffee, except uh, so it depends what you like. Uh, if you like the shot uh, coffee shots, uh, it's pretty strong. If not, you can always top it up with water and add a little bit of cream if you want to. I also carry uh, garbage bags. Um, on a campsite, there is uh, I, you never want to leave a mess, so I have a garbage bags with me, and I, I take the garbage with uh, with us uh, or where we are with the group. We don't leave any mess uh, when we go camping in a wild. A little bottle of butane. Uh, this is the smallest one, I think. Yeah, this is the smallest one. Uh, that's usually more than enough for the whole trip. Uh, there was only one time that I used it up more. Instant rice, Uncle Ben's, and eggs. When we go with the group of guys, uh, we usually buy a 12 pack of eggs and uh, most of us they have those little storage containers um, one thing uh, you gotta remember when you're using those especially when you're riding off-road uh, you don't want to keep the eggs only inside this container uh, cover them up with the on top and bottom with the paper towel I never had any issue that the eggs cracked uh, with this method if I didn't use the paper towel uh, there was uh, one occasion that I arrived and a couple eggs were broken and they made a mess inside. But what I will also do when the eggs are here, I will also put that into a plastic bag uh, just for, uh, for a peace of mind. So this way I don't have a mess to clean up afterwards. So right, right in here, GSI frying pan. And it is an aluminum frying pan, collapsible. Uh, more than enough room to cook your bacon and eggs or whatever you are preheating. Uh, very nice and it packs small. A uh, couple of those uh, aluminum trays, just if I want to use the actual campfire, I will use those. And that's all covered with the bubble wrap, so this way it doesn't rattle and doesn't get scratched inside the pannier, even though I do have the liners, but uh, this way I don't have the noise uh, of rattling. For the food, I take a little bit with me always. Uh, so in this case here, I have a ham, I have a chicken breast, and this one is a mystery can because the label came off. So <laughs> it, uh, last time I spilled the water inside and uh, soup, uh, cream, cream of mushrooms. Uh, I also have some cold cuts sometimes that I'll pick up during the day and I'll have it uh, for the supper or for the evening snack uh, that I will use. Um, another items I can take with me is the wet towels baby wipes you can call them whatever um, so you can quickly uh, use them if you need to and they usually stay on top in that cover on the on inside the on top of the pannier additional bottle of fuel that that fuel is for my international stove uh, it's a small can of uh, 20 ounces or 591 milliliters. This is uh, usually for my bike, but uh, oh no, sorry, it's on the other side. But that one here also can be used in a bike for a bike in emergency, or uh, if you need it for cooking, it's there. And there's one more item right here inside the pannier. If you are going off road with uh, many guys or even by yourself, have the rope with you. I have a little bit of rope. It's good to have an emergency. So it's sitting right on the bottom so it doesn't take up much room. There is one more item that I carry is for Smokies, a little uh, collapsible fork. So whenever we have a campfire, I can use it for Smokies. And that fits nicely just in the back here. So on the crash bar bags, a few more items here. I have my first aid kit. Uh, so, gotta have that. I have my shovel, uh, the, which I made a review as well on my channel, if you want to have a look of this. Uh, it can be used for chopping wood or digging, uh, it's a multi-tool shovel. And a tarp. Right on the bottom, I always have my warm gloves, uh, so just in case if uh, the weather changes, uh, sometimes when we're passing through the mountain uh, ranges, uh, it gets cold. 
and uh, warm gloves are always good to have. So that's all in this uh, crash bar bag right here. And we'll jump over to the other side. Left side pannier, I have the spare tube for the front. I have the spare tube for the rear. That's a heavy duty tube actually, because I gotta put that on and remove my light duty because uh, I caught a flat last time and I bought a brand new tube and that one will go actually once I change the tires. Uh, I have my air compressor that also serves a, uh, can serve as a battery power bank. I made a review on this a while back if you want to check it out on my channel. So this unit is rechargeable and it holds the charge actually very good. It has a USB, two USB ports in the back, a regular USB and a micro, macro USB. And the last item inside this bag, uh, crash bag, is my tire uh, rim protectors and uh, valve stem remover or some stuff like that. And of course I do have my tools as well that, uh, pack, that are packed beside the pannier in the back here. So my toolbox is uh, made by Bumot as well, so it's attached to the uh, rack or where the panniers are sitting. Um, I also made a video on that quite some time back. If you want to browse what tools you need uh, that work on the road. So that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, the, the top box, as I mentioned, is all my camera gear, my drone and uh, little uh, small items. Um, my uh, tank bag, uh, I do carry a Leatherman multi-tool, uh, so that's got all your little scissors and everything that you need. Usually I also have a couple uh, power banks to charge all my equipment. I usually carry three of them and they're quite big, like 28,000 uh, milliamps uh, and they're made by Anchor but many of you may not need it uh, unless you're doing uh, videos or charging uh, any equipment on the road. So I do have a 12 volt uh, power charger, uh, USB power charger that I can run the cable inside my tank bag and charge those power banks while I'm riding. And that's pretty much it, uh, what I carry with me when I go on a longer adventures. If that video was helpful to you in any way, and if you like that video, don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, write them in the comments. I'll try to answer as best as I can. So that's it for today and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.